Howdy hey folks, my name is Mario, I'm the lead developer for the Chaos Recipe Enhancer. I'm really excited to share our latest update with you, version 3.23, ahead of the Affliction League launch. A lot of really highly requested features added in this patch, specifically, you know, OAuth integration, which is a simple two-click auth mechanism as opposed to all the shenanigans we had to deal with with PoE session ID. Tons of bug fixes, tons of enhancements down the line. I'm going to go through the installation, configuration, and a, a small demo at the end. Just kind of one take, see how far we can get. I do want to say, however, quick shout out to our Discord community here on the main project page. There's a link to it. I'm already on the server, so this will just link me back to my... There we go. It's just going to launch my Discord app. If I miss anything in the video, if you have any questions, any bugs that you'd like to report, um, aside from reporting them on the Enhanced PoE issue board here, this is the GitHub issue board, hit me up on Discord. I am extremely active on the server. Aside from like the first 12 hours of League Launch where I'm absolutely blasting, I'm really happy to help out. So let's go ahead and get started with the installation. The Pro, or the video description should have the link to the main project repository. What we're looking for is on the right hand side with the latest releases here. And I can click on the latest release right here. I'll be linked to a bunch of patch notes, bunch of awesomeness here for us. What I'm interested in is the setup.msi. This is the installer here for the application. We're going to click through a couple of prompts, some security prompts, and then we have the installation wizard guiding us through. Change these settings to your heart's desire. Some more prompts and boom, installation completed. I can go ahead and boot up the app for the first time. And we're greeted by this Path of Exile account, this kind of login screen. And I remember the last video I made for this, it was like a whole five minute segment. And I had to rehearse that so many times to get it down, uh, discussing the PoE session ID, how to hack into your Chrome to get that cookie, blah, blah, blah. Lucky for us, it's a very simple one, two-click auth mechanism. It takes a couple seconds to fetch that token, but we are in and ready to start using the application. So we've gone ahead and logged in using our Path of Exile account, connected it, hooked it up to the Chaos Recipe Enhancer app, and we are ready to start configuring our application here. Looking at the left-hand side, we have this section for recipe logic, some le recipe logic configuration. The one setting I want to focus on for now is the full set threshold. This is simply going to be the number of sets you want to turn in. So I'm going to set this to five. We added this new setting that allows you to vendor sets early. So in the case of having, say, only three sets in your stash, but you still want to turn that in, have some cash on hand, make some good trades, well, you can leave this on. It comes on by default in the later versions. On the right-hand side, we have a general section here. And this league selector, this dropdown, is going to be dynamically populated. When the new league launches, it will show up here. There's no need to wait for any other updates, new versions that you have to reinstall, nothing of the sort. You can just go ahead and, if you're really worried, refresh and new leagues will pop up here. For this demo, I'm gonna use standard. There's also a checkbox here that allows you to use a custom league in the case of being in a private league with your buddies, with your guild. This is where you would input that custom league uh, name. I'm gonna leave it here for standard. We have a couple different query modes. For the simple demo, I'm gonna use the select tabs from list setting. And what this does, as the name implies, there's this drop down here. If we click fetch, it'll go to standard, look at my standard stash and populate all the different stash tabs that I have in my standard stash. I'm gonna go ahead and select these first two and save the setting. There's also an option here to fetch on new map. What that means is in game, when you go into a new instance, it will automatically fetch the latest stash data available. And 
I can go ahead and show you real quick. If I enable this, we're going to get prompted to link our path of exile client.txt. Now, this is going to be located not in Documents My Games Path of Exile, but rather if I go down to my PC, my C drive, where my game installation is located, Grinding Your Games, Path of Exile, Logs, and here we will find the client.txt log file. You can go ahead, have that selected, click open, and we now have it hooked up for automatic fetching when we rezone. Awesome. What I can actually do from here is run the overlay. I know the game's not running yet, but just to show you the set tracker overlay, I can go ahead and fetch and what I just did there was make a query to the Path of Exile API and populated some information in the app that allows me to start tracking how many sets of items I have and how many sets I have completed to turn in for chaos. So that's a simple overview that will get you going. Next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about, I'll close this first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the loot filter manipulation. And we're, we're going to want to have this set up before we boot up in-game. I want to first enable the setting. And what this does is when you are doing uh, or composing sets, it's cool to be able to pick up and see the item counts. But you also want to be able to see the items filtered out for you to pick up in your maps. And for that, I have some filters here that I downloaded from NeverSync. Uh, just any filter will do really offline filter file. It has to be a file that you can point to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enable this to show the icon on the map. And in just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and boot this up in game so we can see some of this put together. So I'm back in game and ready to showcase the app in action. We're going to start by running the overlay and I have a couple of sets here set up just for demo purposes, but consider this, you know, a messy dump tab that you might have set up and I am ready to run a new map. So let me go ahead and pick a, probably not a dungeon. Sure. Let's do estuary. Just pop that in right there. And remember that I have the fetch on new map setting enabled. So as you're mapping, leaving hideout, joining maps, etc. The fetch is going to run automatically. You could see it went from grayed out, you have not fetched yet, to, okay, now my, my sets have started to compose. And there's something we have to do here manually due to limitations on the third-party app policy. It's a one action per action kind of limit. So we can fetch as a part of that one action, but we can't reload filter in the same action, else that would be breaking TOS. I want to keep all the users safe, so we have to kind of keep that in there. A separate button for reload filter that we're going to go ahead and hit. Now, we had set up the reload filter previously, and now I kind of cheated a little bit, but what we should see here, I have some items in my stash already, so I cheated in that I just brought these from uh, another stash tab. I'm going to see them highlighted based on the color I see in the set tracker. Now... I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to pick them back up. I'm going to put these back in my stash. Okay, cool. Let's say I completed a map and I'm just going to go ahead and re-enter a new map. And you could see that automatically things got updated and the one state that did change, we could see the chest pieces, the body armors here, they faded out. And what that means is you have enough body armors ready to go. So now you can Whenever you see a state change, reload the filter and we'll sync everything together and we go on mapping. And what I'm hoping is I get a couple of drops here if the game will allow it. Awesome. And we can see we already have more gear falling from the sky. Awesome, awesome. And I'm hoping to showcase. So we could see here a chest dropped, but we don't see it highlighted. That's because with the filter, once the filter was reloaded for this session, we took that off dynamically. 
but we still saw gloves because we need gloves. We still saw an amulet. We still saw boots. So, and as you saw there, when I hit alt, we're still respecting all the never sync filter rules. So it's hiding a lot of stuff because of the strictness level that I'm on right now. But, and you can see here like for like uniques and for rogue markers, other currencies and such, all those never sync rules will still apply. They don't conflict with one another. I want to clarify one thing. As you can see here, I have a set tracker that shows having five gloves and five body armors. And the updates are not absolutely instant. There's this concept of a forced refresh that you need to do in order to make sure that the API is returning the right thing. So what I mean by all that is the set tracker, when I hit fetch again, it's not going to change. Be even though like I took these out of my stash, you actually have to go into a new zone to force the API to update. And you can see there, because I have that auto refresh enabled, it just updated there only after I hit the rezone. So I think the two ways you can force a refresh are waiting a whole like like five minutes for you know the API to catch up, so to speak, or simply rezone. The final thing I wanted to showcase was turning in sets using the stash tab overlay. So I configured to have a set threshold of five. However, I do have the early vendor uh, flag ticked. So I can actually just go ahead and open up my stash tab overlay and pick three sets. Before I get started, you can see based on the user's resolution, screen size, whatever the case may be, this set tracker is not going to line up right off the bat. You can go ahead and edit it by clicking the edit button. It's draggable, so you can align the cells, the grid, with your stash tab in-game. And you can drag this corner here to get a perfect pixel, pixel perfect match. And another thing, if I can find amongst all the chaos, my settings here. I want to look at the overlay settings. You can line up these tabs. They are kind of a mess to code, not going to lie, but we do what we can. And just do a little bit of wizardry here with the... Uh, that's good enough for the demo. Again, you can get as pixel perfect as you'd like. So once that's done, I'm going to save the settings so that this position is is set for the next time I open it. And we're gonna see a couple things going on. So the first is the tabs are highlighted. If a tab is highlighted, that means that it contains items that you need to complete your set. So I'm gonna start with Chaos 2. This is the second tab that I have here. I'm gonna pick from this. And from Chaos 1, I have a couple more items. And boom, so I just controlled control clicked these items right into my stash and I think if I put these scrolls away and do a little bit of Tetris I think I might be able to fit in one more set so I'm gonna go ahead and do that as I control click these items away the um, the cells are not highlighted anymore now I've gotten a full inventory a lot of people ask me, how do I turn in sets? This is how I do it. I just leave the set tracker on while I vendor these sets. I have four whole chaos. Put the chaos back and I can continue where I left off. That about covers everything I had in mind for this video. It was pretty high level. We didn't go into each and every little setting and toggle and configuration option for the Chaos Recipe Enhancer, but hopefully it's enough to get you going. The app has changed so much over the course of the past few years, and I'm really looking forward to adding in more features, fixing more bugs, and making sure that the community stays in tune by checking out our Discord and actively communicating with me. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm very active there. So if there's anything 
I can ask of y'all. It's to make sure that whenever something breaks, let me know and I will be right on it. Thanks again for your support. Thank you for using the tool. And I hope everyone has an absolutely wonderful Affliction League.